Welcome to Learning Photography with Duck. Here's your host, Duck. Okay, we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to another edition of Learn Photography with Duck. I am once again your host, Duck. And tonight's episode is... Oh, I'm starting to disappear. Look at that. Uh, tonight's episode is photo Q&A, but uh, those of you who've been following the past couple of weeks, uh, I've been wanting to get some live workshops going here during the uh, live Q&A. And tonight is no exception. In the house, we have our favorite, actually come around here. Oh, I definitely, look at this. I'm, I'm sparkling because of the, the green screen. Oh, look at All that. right, You're there sparkly. we go. You're oh, he's sparkling, oh sparkling too. He's sparkling too. Yeah, I'm really sparkling. <laughs> this is twice the size of him. You are. <laughs> I didn't realize you were that tall. Okay. All right. You I'm, look. He looks taller on video. That's what it is. You know, I look fatter on video. He looks taller. All right. Well, anyways, that's Brian. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, tabletop photography, and we're going to be using um, constant lights. We're not going to be using flash. That's why the the lighting here is a little bit weird. If you notice, you know, my, my shirt's starting to come in and out against that green screen because I've turned off a lot of the lights in the studio uh, in preparation for what we're going to be doing. Um, <clears throat> so what are, uh, actually, let's get uh, some, uh, for those of you who are just joining us, um, <clears throat> the Connecticut Professional Photographers Association does a monthly little photo walk. Uh, this past month was kind of postponed until the beginning of the month, and we went to um, Marsh, Marsh Trails in North Haven, which was pretty cool pretty amazing those of you who missed it out if you ever get a chance to go on that trail i i highly recommend it it's lots of neat little things to discover along that trail uh anyway uh not not for december but for january we're looking to get together to photograph the eagles over at chapog dam in southbury uh, I know Alan, you've been there, I'm sure, right? You're you're our uh, our, yeah, our resident I've animal. I've been there, and I've got my reservation for uh, February. Oh, for February, okay. Uh, I I'm not the one that puts together these for the uh, CTPPA, um, but I am involved with the person who does, and I told her, you know. She, she better get a hold of whoever's in charge and make the reservations ASAP. Otherwise, we're going to end up on the on the wait list. Uh, I'm sure they fill yeah. up rather quickly, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm sure you can attest that that's probably another one of those locations that's pretty awesome to go to. Uh, sadly, I've never been there, so I am looking forward to, you know, checking it out uh, next month. Um, so as soon as she gives me the date and time, I will pass it on to you guys. So Alan, take advantage of it, uh, advantage of it. You get a, a you know another jump at it. So it's, 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 it's a real neat place. I mean, definitely have bigger uh, six hundred millimeter lenses. Yeah, uh, and your binoculars, and like every like everything else in nature, be prepared for no eagles as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from what I understand, uh, it, the eagles are there. They're not totally in abundance like they are in Maryland. Yeah. But um, it's a hit and miss, just like everywhere else in Connecticut. Um, I've run into eagles at two two thirty in the afternoon up here in Massachusetts. Wow. Um, as well as ten o'clock in the morning in Manchester. Yeah. So, I mean, it's uh, hit or miss. Yeah, and I've it been. Is, it is a neat experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been told, but of course I have no experience in this, but I've been told uh, the colder it is, the more opt you are to see them in that location. So 
we'll see. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's it's one person's observation. They passed that little info to me, and you know, it's one of those things that yeah, yeah it kind of makes sense. I mean, these these guys love the cold. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, what we have. Let me switch over here. Uh, Brian is in the house. He has brought some bottles that he wants to learn how to photograph. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let me turn. All right. As you can see, my studio is in darkness in preparation. So hopefully you guys can, can see what we got going. But as usual, if you got any questions, just call it out. Uh, let me go over there. Let me let me turn my screen to. Uh, top of my head. Where where are we? Well, there we are. Hey, here I am. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Awesome. Brian, come on in. Oh, I'm on the <laughs> corner. <laughs> I'm here. Here we go. Here we go. Here. Slide, slide in, slide there in over here. Slide in over here. All right. You're taller than. Oh, look. We're, we're, the same, we're the same size now. That's awesome. That's Different funny. lens. Yeah. All right. So, uh, those of you who do not know Brian, this is Brian. Uh, oh, Glory just joined. Awesome. Uh, nice. And he brought an assortment of bottles. And I mean, a, a large assortment. Obviously, we're not going to get through all of them. Uh, but what we did is we picked a few examples to kind of get the basics down. And then once you have the basics, the rest is just, you know, finessing it to each individual bottle. But, I mean, he's got, he's got everything from, from clear bottles to colored bottles. I don't know if you can see beautiful blue, all right? Uh, I mean, he's even got paperweights, cut crystal paperweights, all kinds of glass stuff, including, let, let, let's bring this up, including this one, which he made himself. Is that pretty wild? <laughs> he he hand-blowed, hand-blowed, hand-blew, <laughs> however you want to say it he hand blew this this bottle i mean that that requires some skill but anyway so uh what we have um is a very dark studio because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using continuous light so when you're working with continuous light you really really have to pay attention about what your ambient light is doing so in this particular case, if I were to turn on all the uh, lights in the studio, all of that is going to, you know, uh, interfere with what we want to do with the product lighting. So to have some kind of control, uh, I decided to turn the overhead lights off. So that's why it's looking a little glum here in the studio. All right. And hopefully you can, oh, it's hard to see. Yeah, maybe I should have used the white background, right? All right, give me one second. Let me put something white behind here, just so, can you see? Oh, yeah, 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 there we go. All right, so what we have here, uh, is he's got let's see he's got this dark wow. glass violin decanter i mean it's it's pretty cool all right and he's got a smaller one that is clear uh let's see let's let's oh can you see it yeah you can kind of sort of yeah. see it I'm trying not to get any reflections here all right, so these two are what we're going to eventually be photographing. But before we get to that, before we get to that, we're going to, we're going to establish the fundamentals 
with just two regular plain bottles. Okay. And the reason I picked these two is because we have a very common bottle, which is, you know, uh, all clear. Uh, so what that does is it allows light to really pass and transmit through it. And then we have this one, which is a dark brown, uh, also hand blown bottle. Brian didn't hand blow this one. He, <laughs> he, he, uh, scoured it from somewhere but you know it's hand blown in a in a mold you know these are these used to be mass produced uh but it's that dark dark brown glass so what happens is uh any light that we put on it does not transmit through it as easily all right so think of it like a pair of sunglasses you put on a pair of sunglasses it cuts down the light so we're going to put them side by side on this table all right and we're going to throw some light on it and see what happens okay so one of the things that you have to keep in mind with anything that is highly reflective is what's called the uh, angle of incidence angle of reflection okay and that's one of the reasons why i turned off the overhead lights is because if i had those lights on not only is it going to light everything but it's also going to reflect off of the glass okay and uh as you can see i'm lit brian's lit brian's hanging off to the side there yeah uh brian's lit because we do have one light way on the other end of the studio uh that we're using so we're not in complete darkness okay and you're gonna see how that light really affects our product it's gonna you know be bouncing all over the place all right so we have a very simple setup right now uh we just have the bottles on a little tabletop it's just a, a little black reflective surface um so nothing fancy, all right? And in the background, I've temporarily put this white card just so you can see the bottles, all right? But directly behind it, you see I have a black backdrop, okay? And that backdrop is going to be our backdrop for this setup, all right? So very simple, all right? I don't want you to get hung up on the background, all right? Uh, because that's not going to be the important part. But we are going to discuss it a little bit because how we set our lights up is going to influence, you know, what how we set up our lights in general and how we set up our background. Okay, so what do we have? Uh, we have the tabletop, we have the glass, right? And... Uh, we have a couple of continuous lights, okay? So, Brian, come on over, get into the shot. No, leave, leave it there. All right, so do me a favor. Uh, we're just going to take that reflector off, this little slide on the side, yeah, and then rotate it. Oh, awesome. All right, we have these uh, reflectors. Okay, that we're going to put on. But for now, we're going to turn them, we're going to leave them off. And I'm going to turn one light on. Actually, do me a favor, turn that light on. Uh, all the way in the back, there's a little black button. Okay, awesome. Woo! Bright light, bright light. Okay, all right. So uh, that is a little uh, Godox continuous light. Right now it's at 50%, right? On the back? Yes, sir. 50%. Okay. So it's putting out 50% of its full output, which is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's like a, a 300 watt, something like that. Um, and as you can see, it's throwing light everywhere. Throwing light everywhere. Now I take this reflector off and just move this light stand 
Okay. So now what we have is our product on the table and a good, I don't know, about four feet behind the product, we have a black cloth. Okay. And we have light spilling all over the place. And you got to be careful where you look because otherwise you're going to get blinded. I mean, I, if I look towards that LED, I'm going to get, you know, blinded. All right. So because we're working with continuous light, we don't have the advantage of the high intensity of output that we would from a strobe light. So that means we have to uh, really concern ourselves with balancing the camera settings to the ambient light and to the light that we're, we're producing for our subject, okay? So, <clears throat> right off the bat, oh, I got spots in front of my eyes. <laughs> right off the bat, you know, or you should know, that when you are photographing anything in, indoors, that the, the light is kind of like a little dimmer than it is uh, like outdoor bright light you're going to be switching your ISO. So my rule of thumb that I teach is if you're outdoors in the bright sun, your camera should automatically be at ISO 100. As soon as you step indoors, it should automatically go to 400. Okay? But here we are in a situation where, one, it's, it's not daylight, and two, it won't matter because there are no windows in my studio. All right, uh, I have to rely on available light through, you know, my overheads. Okay, so that means the light in here is already a lot dimmer. So by default, I'm going to even drop it down to ISO 800. Okay, now uh, that's a little, that's a little low. Okay, actually, am I at, no, I'm, I'm at 400. Okay, all right. I'm at 400, all right? I don't want to drop it. I don't want to raise the ISO too much because it's going to start introducing noise, okay? But I also know from experience that ISO 100 is probably not going to do well uh, on its own. Now, the other aspects to the exposure triangle when we're using continuous light is we can manipulate our aperture and we can manipulate our shutter. And if we have low light, what do we want to do? We want to extend our shutter, right? Okay. But if we extend it too much, we start gaining noise because what it's doing is it's anything that is uh, underexposed, underlit, is going to be, um, uh, when, we, when we keep the exposure open too long, we're going to be bombarding the sensor with a lot of light. And the longer you leave it open, the more noise you're going to start building up. So it becomes a little bit of a balance. All right, I'm not going to go into details about that, but it's something you need to consider. All right, in the old film days, it was called reciprocity. But like I said, we're not going to get too overly complicated here. Can I ask yeah. about because I've always I'm I'm the old, you know, from the film. Yeah, and we've always wanted the lowest. Correct. ASA, they called it. But you're saying if you get too low, then if that increases yeah. your exposure time, and that's what causes noise. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, and that's a different start. kind of noise than really. High uh, not really, not technically. Okay. It's just the cause of it is different. Okay. Um, the uh, the image sensors are very sensitive to light. Okay, and because we're in a darker environment, it's going to amplify whatever light it can. All right, so what happens is we have to find that balance between the, the really bright parts of our image 
and the dark parts of our image, all right, and find that balance where uh, the pixels that are receiving a lot of light don't blow out, okay? Uh, and that would happen if you have your ISO too low, all right, because in order to gain any information in the shadows, you need to leave your shutter open longer, right? And if you've ever noticed uh, on grainy images, uh, if you really analyze, you're going to find that the, the, the grain is more noticeable in shadows than in areas that are, are light. And that's the, the nature of digital. Okay. All right. So again, uh, not to go too much into that, but just keep in mind, we have to find that balance. All right, so I don't want to push the ISO too high uh, because it's going to create noise on its own. But if we keep it too low and, and that causes our shutter to stay open longer, that could be a detriment. All right, so we have to find a balance point. And my balance point, like I said, as soon as you go inside, your, your ISO should automatically go to ISO 400. Okay. So that's what I did. As I set it at 400, uh, uh, lower light, you can push it to 800, but again, we want to control it. Okay, everybody with me so far? Good. I'm seeing some, some, uh, some head shaking. Okay, so we need to uh, get an exposure. We're going to meter this, okay? And... You again, you have to keep the fundamentals in mind. Whenever you meter anything, it's going to want to take the average of what it's metering it at and it's going to want to convert it to anybody tell me 50% gray, right? Okay, but we're not dealing with 50% gray here. All right, we have a black tabletop, we have a black background, we have a dark bottle and a clear bottle okay the clear bottle is going to transmit right so what i want to do is i want to uh uh break this down even further and we're going to start with the clear bottle okay look like you mentioned that you're going to use a meter are you using a handheld or i i could use i do have a handheld meter uh i could use it but uh, we're just going to use the meter in the camera, all right? Uh, just a quick question. How yeah. good is it liable for like, your, uh, your phone, the program that has metering on it? Is that any good at all? Uh, the light meter on the phone? Uh, yeah, well, you get an app. Uh, an app yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's, to tell you honestly, uh, I don't know. The phone, I, I haven't tried it with my phone, my current phone. My previous phone, it didn't work. But I know people with iPhones that say it actually works pretty well. Uh, so I, I think it's really dependent on the, uh, the phone. The thing is, uh, it's gonna be using your, your cell phone's camera as the detector which behaves a little bit different than, you know, like, um, where's my, where's my meter? Like an incident meter. All right. It's going to behave a little bit different than, than one of these. Okay. Okay. Um, but from people who have used it on their iPhone, uh, I've heard some pretty good stuff. I didn't get that result because one, it was an older Android and it didn't work with my Android. So <laughs> what's the name of that iPhone app? I don't recall. Okay. It, it was, Are it was, Al, do you know, what did you say? Big Al? Uh, uh, there, there's a couple of them now. Yeah. Uh, you an just an look, an just an look an up a uh, light meter app. Uh, and I'm yeah, I'm sure app. you're going to get all kinds, all kinds. All right. I so I'll bet it's, Dependent on how good your camera or phone is. iPhones are really good. Yeah. yeah. Mine, not so good, probably. <laughs> All right. Now, 
I can take an incident reading with this, but not everybody has one. Of, do you have one of these? No, I don't. He doesn't have one. Uh, any of you guys have one of these? No. Oh, okay. So, you know what? What's what's the sense of me using this if you guys don't have it, right? So I don't use it. Well, Gloria, we're gonna have to teach you how to use it. <laughs> no, I I have to learn, but I have one, but it's not like yours. Uh, well, it may not be the same model, but it's going to do the same thing. But besides the point, we're going to be using the camera's built-in uh, uh, meter, which is a reflective meter. Okay, reflective meter. Meter. Right. That means it's going to take a meter reading of the light that is being reflected from our product back to the camera. Right. Okay. So if all right, right now we have one light and uh, let's get my composition going here. Zoom out a little bit. All right. That background is, is garbage, but you know what? It'll work for now. And we're going to take, oh, all right. So <clears throat> typically, typically, <laughs> uh, when, when uh, I show off an image and people ask, oh, what are your camera settings? Typically, I say it doesn't matter, all right? But in this case, we're walking through the process of the setup. So I'm going to share my, my uh, readings. Just realize that whatever i read off to you guys you're not going to be able to replicate it because one you're not going to be in the same kind of ambient light you're not going to have the same kind of light with the same type of power with the same kind of reflective surface all right so just keep that in mind all right but for this the reason i want to tell you is just to let you realize how low a light we're actually working with all right, so my ISO is already set to 400. Uh, I set that right out the gate. And my aperture, my aperture is at the wide open for this particular lens, which is 2.8. All right, so I have wide open, so it's going to be a fairly shallow depth of field. Okay. And that gives me an uh, eighth of a second. All right, so that's pretty slow. Mm -hmm. That's very, very slow. Okay, so let's take a shot. Does that add noise slow? Uh, well, Maybe. we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. So let's slide over to um, the desktop. Okay, and that's what we see. Okay. Uh, actually, you can see yeah. right here. All right, so that's what we see. And does that look like a good shot? I think I'll start taking pictures of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lousy shot. That's a Horrible. terrible yeah. shot. That's a terrible shot. All right, and the reason it's a terrible shot is because we metered for it, and it's going to want to meter everything at that 50% gray. But like I mentioned earlier, our background's not 50%, our surface is not 50%, and our bottle is not 50%, okay? As a matter of fact, the bottle presents the biggest problem because it's going to reflect back whatever we throw at it, okay? Because it's literally, it's a clear bottle, okay? So because it's a reflective surface, all right, Throwing a bare bulb at it is the worst thing you can do, all right? And you can see that, uh, let's see if I can zoom it in here. Oh, it's, my zoom thing's not working. Here we go. Okay. All right. If we zoom in, there we go. If we zoom in, you can see that little bit of a highlight there, okay, the, the hot spot. All right, and we see a hot spot right up there. Okay, 
that's our light source. Okay, that's reflecting our light source. Okay, and everything else, the reason we can see this bottle is because light is being transmitted through the glass. So if you can picture it, it hits the glass and it travels through the substrate of the glass and it bends around and it's reflecting within the, the dual surface of all the glass, okay? That's what allows us to really see the glass. Uh, and of course, we're seeing all kinds of reflections here that it's, it's picking up throughout the room, all right? And uh, it's even picking up where my old label, I removed the label, uh, there's residual glue there, so it's picking that up as well, okay? Uh, all right, so what do we need to do? Soften that light. We need to soften the light, absolutely. Okay, so how can we soften it? What's what's the rule of thumb for softening lights? Do you know, Brian? No. <laughs> Make the diffuser. Oh, diffuser. Uh, yes, yes, that's the tool we use. But what's the rule behind it? Do you know? Closer to the subject, have to have the light closer to the subject. Uh, that's is that's a control, but it's you're you're kind of getting there. Uh, anybody else? I thought I heard somebody else. Put it away from the subject. Okay. Uh, no, we actually, I'll give it to you. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna let you guys, oh, I should, uh, switch, switch back. There we go. Uh, what we need to do is we need to make our light bigger. We need to make our light bigger, bigger. Okay. The bigger the light the softer it is on our subject. The smaller the light, the, the more specular the light becomes, all right? So that's, that's the rule. The tool, like Bill mentioned, is throw up a diffuser, okay? So there's a diffusing panel right here, and if you want, just put it uh, right into that clamp, okay? And there you go, all right? And I'll use this one for demonstration purposes. Okay, so I have these diffusion panels that these, these are my little DIY panels. Okay, and you can see they're pretty large. Okay, uh, I don't remember the size I made these. I made these custom for my, my table. Um, but they're roughly, I think it's, I don't know, two by three feet, let's call it. Okay. Uh, so now, if we compare it to what we had, which was a small little LED in, you know, in, inside our light, uh, so that, be, that was our point light, okay? Now we put this in front of it, this whole entire surface gets lit by that light, all right? And this now becomes our light source, becomes our light source, okay? So by enlarging our light, we are making the light softer. Okay. But because we also put something in front of the light between our light source and our subject, we put that diffusion panel, we are now cutting down on the light. Okay, now, if we look at the previous image, it was... Overexposed, underexposed, or properly exposed? I would say close to properly exposed, but just ugly. <laughs> uh, well, okay, let's analyze it. What about it made it ugly? Let's let's throw that image up. Let's throw that image up. Okay, here it is. All well, right. The, to me, the glass didn't look like glass, and the the background hit you. Okay. Well, what colors are background? It's supposed to be. Oh, okay. Supposed to be, it is black. It is black, not but not there. in the photo. Right. All right. So is is in the photograph? Is that background properly exposed? No. No. What would you say? Underexposed. 
overexposed. Oh, overexposed. Yes. <laughs> okay. The same thing with our tabletop. The tabletop is a black reflective. All right. So one, it's black. And two, it's reflective. So it's going to reflect whatever gets lit up. All right. Uh, around it. And if you look closely, right, we have a very dusty tabletop. But if you look closely, right he oh actually let's let's keep it if you look closely right here you can see that it's reflecting our backdrop all right and we can see it here it's reflecting our backdrop all right all those dark lines that's here here and here and here all right that's being reflected off our tabletop okay and that is overexposed it should be black Okay, so because it's overexposed, what do we need to do with our light? And we need to dim it. All right. So now, what? Uh, don't dim it yet. I'm not dimming. Okay. <laughs> because just by the process of adding that diffusion panel, we're already cutting light out. Okay. So now we can take a look at it and say, okay let's see what that does all right i'm not going to meter all right because if i re-meter it's going to want to do what it's going to want to convert everything right. to that 50 percent gray exactly all right so we want to avoid that we want to purposely we're going to purposely underexpose our image all right and this is a conscious decision on our part because we understand how light works, right guys? All right, so all my settings are still the same. Eighth of a second, ISO 400, uh, uh, aperture of 2.8. And we're gonna take a shot. Let's see what that looks like. All right. And we're still pretty much overexposed. Okay, so if we Compare the two. All right, if you compare the two, all right, uh, we really didn't lose too much light. Okay, why? Why did we not lose that much light? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make Brian. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna make you think. Watch the, watch the. Okay. Okay. Here's our light source. Woo! Light source. Okay. Here's our panel. Here's our subject. Okay. We put something between our light source and our subject. But if you look, our, our background, the exposure didn't change. Why did our background exposure not change? We put something oh, in between. Right? Yeah. Why didn't it change? Well, the the light that's right here is also going straight at it's, that thing too. It's also hitting exactly. All right. So now we said, oh, we're gonna need to somehow block the light from also hitting our background. All right. So it's all about light control. All right. And for that, we do have something that we can control. All right, which is a standard reflector. Okay, so Bryce's gonna put that on, and what it's doing is it's literally putting a little control on the sides of the light and uh, not allowing it to spill onto our background as much. And just go ahead and angle that light uh, so it's it's not hitting that back. So. so so all you gotta do is just, you know, because we're using constant lights, all you gotta do is look at the light. There you go, perfect, 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 perfect. All right, and you can see that the light that was hitting our background is no longer hitting our background. See, all right? Uh, and that's the, that's the great thing about using constant lights is that you can actually see the effect of the light on what you're working with, all right? All right. So again, I'm not doing anything with my camera settings. They're still the same, right? 
So any guesses as to what the results are going to be? Better. Better. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. <laughs> All right, let's switch it over. And it is a little better, okay? It is a little better, okay? Not by a lot, but it is a little better, okay? All right, and we're out of focus. I must have banged into the camera, okay? But we're starting to get there. Now, <clears throat> we're doing product photography, okay? So if we look, we can see our modifier on the edge of our screen, okay? And this is one of the things that you have to make a decision, okay? Uh, do I want everything in frame to be as best as possible, or do I understand that I'm going to be doing some post-processing, right? And more than likely, you're going to be doing some post-processing to your image. So if that's the case, having the light visible here isn't a concern because we can crop, all right? Uh, we can crop. And, and or we can just take it and remove that and take whatever is here and use it to fill in that space. So we can expand our background into those spaces, all right? So keep in mind, all of this is who cares, all right? Who cares, all right? What we are concerned about is how the light, oops, how the light interacts with our subject okay all right and what do you think about the light here come come on come on into frame there you go what do you think of our, our light on the subject too much too all much right. light yeah okay absolutely all right all right <clears throat> let's go back to the studio oops uh there we go all right so we need to do something to control our light a little bit more, okay? So our light is at 50%. Uh, we, we've reduced the light spill onto the back of our uh, background, okay, from that light, just by putting the, the uh, hood on it, right? And we have our diffusion panel up kind of softening our light while making it bigger all right so now we can we've taken some control back with those little changes so now we can look at the camera and say okay can i reduce that light with our settings and the answer is yes of course we can all right of course we can a quick question though yeah because i'm looking from here I see the egg from this light here. So mm -hmm. would one of the solutions be getting it to diffuse more? Correct. Yeah. Like All right. So we can pull that light away. All right. So it's going to make that, that circle bigger. All right. There you go. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. All right. And yeah, it's, it's hard for you guys to see. But again, that's the beauty of having... Uh, uh, using continuous light is any changes that we make in studio, we get a, a instant feedback as to what it's doing. Uh, and it really softened up. Okay. What Brian was talking about, if you hadn't uh, heard, actually, you know what? I'll demonstrate. Oh, hey, I meant to do that. That's what happens when you got a small studio. I'm going to put on this diffusion panel and I'm going to turn on this light. Uh, can you guys? I don't know. This, this light is, is shining back to you a little bit more. Um, I'll exaggerate. Nah. You guys can't see that in the, in the video very well, but uh, there's a small circle right here, all right? 
It's not visible, is it? No. It's too much light. <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can. It's not going to do it. Sorry, can't can't illustrate it. Can't illustrate it on video. All right. But if we look at the diffuser, all right, the closer your light is, we're going to see the actual shape of our of our modifier on the light. All right. So by backing it up, we're getting a little bit more of a spread, more even lighting onto the diffuser panels. And that's what we want because the bottle is reflective. It's going to reflect our light source. So because we created these large panels, it is now reflecting the light panels back to us. Okay? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this to the front. Okay? And typically, Typically, we're taught, you know, especially if you do portrait photography, all right, you have your subject, you want your your uh, your primary light, your key light to be roughly 45 degrees, a little bit higher than uh, eye level, all right? That's very traditional position for lighting the front of a person's face, okay? So if we take our lights and just go ahead and, and move... Move that to the front. It's, it's more this way. If we light the bottle from the front, what ends up happening, right? Take a photograph here. What ends up happening is we are lighting the entire front of that bottle. All right. What we are seeing in this bottle is the light, uh, the light source being reflected back to us. All right. So I don't know if you can tell. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I, I apologize. Hold on. Give me a second. Uh, I should be sharing my screen so you guys can see this a little bit better. There we go. Of course, that's probably now going to create all kinds of havoc with my system, right? It doesn't seem to fail. All right. So if we look here, all right. Actually, let me, we have a round section of our bottle, correct? All right. So we're going to get a warped reflection of our scrim. Our scrim is rectangular. But if we look at the reflection of it, we can see, all right, this is our scrim, all right? And you can see how it warps at the top of that shoulder of the bottle, all right? But we can see that rectangle of our modifier, all right? And because we're lighting the bottle from the front, all we're getting is reflection back towards us, which, is that a pretty picture? Worse than before. Oh, worse than, <laughs> absolutely. Definitely worse than before. Okay. All right. But we can also tell the quality of our light being, or the I should say the intensity of our light is still a little bit too bright. So what we're going to do is let's, let's see if we can wrangle the, the quantity of our light. All right. So it's not as bright. All right, so we're going to bring, we're at an eighth of a second. All right, so what do we need to do? Do you know? No. <laughs> we got to go faster Fast. or slower. Fast. We don't want to go much later. All right, so let's try. And here, I'm just going to pick an arbitrary number. All right. Uh, one thirtieth of a second. All right, so I more than doubled it. Let's take a, let's take a shot. All right. Oh, there we go. Now we're starting to get our bottle a little bit more in line to what we need to see. Okay. Uh, we still have ugly 
highlights, okay? But this is what we have to deal with, all right? When we're dealing with glass, it's not so much we're lighting the surface, but we are lighting what's being reflected back, all right? So what are we lighting? We're lighting our scrims. The scrims are being reflected back to us, all right? So we need to do something with these things. Obviously, it's not the best looking shot, all right? They're too far forward, all right? So the front, the front of our glass is now reflecting everything back at us, right? Right. All right, so if we don't want the front of the bottle reflecting these, what do you think we need to do? Move the, two things, move the shade, or move the light, and then well, move it back. All right, so... I mean, this is too, you had me move this forward, yeah. and I think yeah. that was a mistake. Well, then you also added that over there. Yes, and the, and true. Okay. okay, so what we need to do is we need to move our... Uh, diffusers, we'll, we'll move the diffusers back so you can move that out of the way. We're going to move our diffusers back, okay? And a, a rule of thumb is that whenever we're dealing with, with reflective surfaces, especially bottles because they're, it, it's literally a full circle this way, right? If we were to cut the bottle in half, right, that part of the half is the closest part to our diffuser okay so we want to be more to the back side of this edge than to the front okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to move our diffusers back all right and just pop over that that leg there there you go okay and now we have to be careful with what we do with our lights, okay? We don't want to light our background, all right? So if we just bring our lights in here, notice how we're picking, oh, I'm, I'm like seriously getting lost in light here, all right? Uh, we are now illuminating our background again, which is not what we want. So what we wanna do is we want to angle our lights so it's coming in more from the back than from the front. Okay? All right. So we're a little tight here. So let me just manipulate this right here. All right. And see what that does. Okay? All right. Now we can just take a look at it from here. And right away, we can see that it's it's got a big difference. So let's take a shot and see what it looks like. All right. Come on over to the desktop. Oh, my God, we're getting we're getting something a little bit better. OK, still not quite there. I think we need to go further back. All right. We need to go further back. What's causing this little bit of. We mm -hmm. haven't figured that out yet. That... Uh, I know what it is. Okay. All right. So Brian asked. What are these? Okay. Is that the bottle? That's where it's uh, put together? Uh, no, actually not. Um, it, it's something... <clears throat> It's something outside of the bottle, okay? Oh. It's something outside of the bottle. It's what I was gonna stand up and do earlier. Yeah. All right, he, <laughs> he actually just figured it out. Uh, right. Remember, glass reflects everything around it, all right? And remember earlier I said that I do have one light remaining on in the studio in order for you guys to be able to see us in the video? It's picking up that light. <laughs> All right. It's picking up that light. So angle of incidence, angle of reflection. All right. If we look at the studio, okay. If we look at the studio, 
the reflection is happening on the front of the bottle. All right, so that means that the light has to be hitting it from the front. Okay, and our light is actually on the other side of the studio. And you guys can't see me because I'm standing in front of that right here. Okay. All right. So how do we get rid of that? Well, we can turn off that light, obviously. Okay. Uh, and if this was your own studio working on this, that would probably be the easiest solution to do is to just go ahead and, and turn that off. But if I turn it off, well, we're going to lose. Uh, I'm lost. I'm lost in the light anyway. Uh, if I turn off that light, uh, we lose our video light. So we have to deal with it. All right. So what I what I gave Brian is a flag. All right. It's just a, a black piece of foam board. And what we can do is we can hold that up between our light and our subject. And it's going to block the reflectance of there. Okay, so go ahead and hold that up. All right, awesome. We'll take a shot. Take a look at that. Switch over. All right, and all right. So now you can see that reflection is is gone. Yep. See that? Yep. All right. Everybody got that? Very simple technique. Just throw. Uh, uh, actually, what we did is we, we used the black card to block the light. Okay. So it doesn't allow the glass to reflect the light, but it is reflecting something. What's it reflecting? It's reflecting that black card. Okay. But because it blends in with everything else that's black, we don't see the card. Make sense? Yep. Makes sense. Okay. There we go. All right. We still need to worry about the reflection of our glass. And I think we need to pull this back even further. All right. So bring that back even more. We uh, we're, we're caught up on gear here. I need a bigger studio. Can you tell? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Put it right up against the table. All right. So here's the the middle of our. Uh, you guys can't see. Let me turn. Let me turn this. All right. There we go. Here's the middle of our bottle, right? If we follow it out, the edge of my reflector or my uh, scrim is now behind that midpoint of our bottle, okay? All right. Let's turn this back on. All right, and the other thing is we kind of randomly pulled a number out of our hat for our shutter speed. I just said 1 30th of a second, all right? Looking at that previous bottle, do you think we can lose a little more light? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's go another stop, right? So from 1 30th to, anybody? Anybody? 60th. 60th of a second, all right. And we'll take another shot. Oh, let's, let's refocus. Because I, I think I knocked my bottle or the camera earlier. All right. And we go take a look. Oh, we got reflections. Back. Uh, we got a reflection. Oh, I wasn't back. standing. No, that, that's okay. Like that's that. okay. Because uh, I'm not concerned about those just yet. I want to get that, that reflection on the side a little bit more. Okay. And we can still see the edge. We can still see that edge. All right of our of our uh, reflector. So let's see if we can make that disappear a little bit more. Okay. All right. What we want to do? Let's see. What edge? Do me a favor. Run your finger on the front. Okay. 
what we're going to do is we're going to angle this away. Angle it away. Okay. So uh, kind of like 45 to the table. It's in diameter. Yeah, so we're going to keep the, the leading edge. Keep the leading edge. Okay. In line here. And so we're, we're still in line this way. But what we're doing is we're, we're pushing this more at an angle. Right, and let's see what that gives us. Good? Okay. All right. There we go. Oh, I uh, go. That's that one. Let's pull up the previous one. Okay. Now we're really getting somewhere. And because it's very reflective, you know what? We can probably lose a little bit more exposure on that light. Okay, what do you think? All right, so just on one of the lights or both of them? Uh, oh, on both. Okay. Uh, we'll be we'll be doing that through the camera. Okay. Um, you'll also notice that when we brought when we angled it, it put these ends a uh, a little closer. All right. Mm -hmm. Notice that that curve of the bottle. All right. That tends to be the most difficult parts of a lot of these photo shoots, all right? We have a lot of warping there. So what it's doing is this part is reflecting anything that's coming in straight at it. This is reflecting everything that's coming straight at it from the side. However, what's this reflecting? It's reflecting what's above, and we don't have anything up there. So it's reflecting our ceiling. All right, and you can see. All right, let me uh, let me zoom in. Okay, you can see. Yeah, there we go. You can see that this reflection. All right, is the same as the it's the same panel. All right, that's being reflected here, but this is the bottom of our panel, right? Mm. Okay, and this is the top of our panel, All right? I don't know if I lost you guys on that one, all right? Because this is reflective, all right? The neck of the bottle, all right, the neck of the bottle is flat, it's going to reflect everything that's flat to that. Follow? From here to here, again, we are very flat to our panel, so it's going to reflect our panel there. So we get the top and the bottom. And up here, we get the top and the bottom. All right? Because they're two reflective surfaces. It's not one reflective surface. All right. It's interrupted by the curve of that, that the neck of the bottle, or, or what's called the shoulder of the bottle. Okay. So what happens is if we get that panel higher, we can actually get it so that they kind of overlap. That's what we want to do. Right. So this is where it gets to finessing your your lights uh when it comes to reflecting reflective surfaces all right so uh i'm not gonna for time's sake i'm not gonna finesse it you know to make this perfect but i want you guys to get the fundamentals all right okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these back a little more okay. straight back Nope, nope, uh, back towards the... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Yeah, perfect, okay. perfect. Okay. All right. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that the light, the majority of the light, 
hits the back side of our panel, not the front side of our panel. All right, so angle, angle that light. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's good enough. Okay. All right. We we don't want to light our background. Okay. We have to. We have to. Uh, again, it's all light control, and that's probably one of the hardest things when you're first starting out is controlling what your lights are actually doing. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll give that. We'll give that a, a try. Oh, hold on. Let me get my All right. Up so he's got the reflector on, uh, or I mean the um, the black card up to avoid reflection from there. Okay. And actually, you know, I want to turn this bottle because I I hate that label. <laughs> God, this changes everything. Uh, it does. All right. Ready? Uh, bring it up. There you go. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. We were picking up that label and it was just bothering. We're still picking up a little bit of the label, but it's not as bad. All right. So here, here's our bottle. Here's our bottle. Okay. And if you notice, let me zoom in right here. I, <laughs> yeah, see, we're still picking up that label. <laughs> Uh, it's a crappy bottle to be shooting, but anyway, if we look at the edges, I bring twenty five antique bottles. He throws up a bottle of Thunderbird. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I know, yeah. All right, uh, but hey, this is all part of the process, yep, you yep, know. Yep. Post processing, you got to clean up all the dust and everything. But now, if we were to take just this, okay. And we look at the quality of the diffusion because we angled our uh, uh, panels away from the front part. We're getting this nice gradation. We have white here feathering off to gray to black. All right, everybody see that? Okay, so we have the brightest part to the back side of the bottle. All right. Because again, you got to keep in mind, uh, the clear, the more transparent the glass is, the more transmission through the glass you're going to get. All right. And just to complicate things for you guys, we're dealing with an empty bottle. Imagine what it's like with a full bottle with some kind of colored liquid. Uh, that's going to just add another layer. The fundamentals are still the same. Fundamentals are still the same. It's just, you know, uh, you got to uh, deal with color and a liquid inside. All right. But if you notice that we have this really nice diffusion going across the edge of our bottle. All right. And now if you notice in the center, it's not quite black. All right. But that's okay. That's okay. Because what we can do is we can just manipulate um, in, in I'm shooting uh, tethered in Lightroom. Uh, I can take that uh, shadow slider and bring it down and create a little bit more contrast and voila, uh, a, a very simple fix. Okay. Now, if you also notice that we are missing a part right there. Okay. So we can finesse it a little bit and throw something that reflects from the top. All right. But we're not going to get that crazy. I we need to move on. Two questions, but not that we'll do it. But in this process of designing, <clears throat> would you do something maybe where you'd want the right shadow, a different shape? You can. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Salt and pepper to taste. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, if you want... You know, if you look at it, this is side uh, A and this is side B. If you want more on this and less on that, it's just a matter of how you place your uh, panels on the side. Okay. All right. Let's go. And all right. So that's what it looks like with a clear bottle. 
let's see what it looks like with a dark bottle. I have a, a quick question about this if we were shooting, like we were going to take pictures of all those. Okay. So we go through the process, and we then just <clears throat> start snapping with all the clear ones? Absolutely. But then when it comes time to do the dark ones, we probably have to reset a few things. Well, I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> don't know yet. All right. All right. So <laughs> what I've done is I've substituted a clear bottle for that really dark bottle. All right. So we have our lights already set up. The, the panels are behind our product. Uh, they're giving us that nice edge definition. We have Brian on our flag. All right, so go ahead and put the flag back up and let's take a photograph. Again, nothing has changed. The only thing that changed is we went from a clear bottle to a dark bottle. And it looks like good. Perfect. Let's go back over to Lightroom. And look at that. Look at that. It works even better with uh, with uh, black glass or yeah. dark glass. Okay. And I'm going to ask you why. Oops. Let's. Okay. Why? Actually, you know what? Let me. Uh, let me. Let me go back to this one here and remove, there we go, okay, and let me add this one and do a comparison, okay. All right, if we look at the quality here in comparison to here, you're going to notice that this one is a lot better than this one, right? Okay. Okay. Why is that? We have all this artifacting going on here, all right, that we actually need to use a slider to remove. But on this one, not so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know why? Well, it's, it's absorbed the light. It's absorbed the light. Yeah, the speculum. Well, I know the term, but you were saying whatever's causing those highlights isn't there yep. to get so caused. yes so what happens is in <clears throat> this image or uh, in the clear bottle right light is being transmitted through the glass so that means any irregularities in the glass is going to get illuminated okay when it comes to a dark colored bottle like this one all right we don't get the same kind of transmission. There's still transmission, but because it's a dark glass, it's like looking through sunglasses. The light doesn't travel through it as much, all right? And if we if we look, all right, we can see that there is a little bit of transmission, all right? Uh, it's picking up some flaws here, all right? picking up some flaws okay uh but that's the nature of the dark glass in comparison to the clear glass but overall the light shaping that we yeah. did for the clear glass works very well for the dark glass okay so the nice thing is if you're doing you know uh what he mentioned was doing a uh drop and pop that's where you, you, you shoot one product, remove it, put the next one in its place without changing anything. You shoot it and everything should all work out. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions? Let's go back to the chat here. All right. Any questions uh, from you guys? Just one quick one on the yep. reflectors. Are they transparent or just a screen or the transparent screen? It's a translucent um, diffusion panel. Uh, and in in this particular case, these panels are homemade. I made them. Uh, if you go on my on the YouTube channel, there's a video on how to make these diffusion panels. And all it is is uh, Savage brand. Uh, uh, translucent diffusion. 
it's a plastic film it's a plastic sheet pretty heavy duty um but it's very neutral uh color wise uh and it doesn't it, and it the quality is really well uh you know if you get some cheaper diffusion panels you can actually see like a modeling of texture right this this doesn't have that it's very 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 smooth even trans uh translucent all right translucent is that a word uh so yeah. it's it's perfect for for my needs here all right um you do lose a little bit of light uh but you know uh, you throw a soft box on on a light you're going to lose a bit of, a little bit of light anyway all right and yeah. you just balance it out okay uh but any questions on how we got to this point all right we're good okay so what we're going to do is we're now going to say okay well that's plain and, and and good but we have very simple bottles all right brian says i don't want to photograph simple bottles all right he actually brought me these cool ones what's the history of these don't know that one but the, the white ones from france the white this little white yeah, the they're, they're from... little violins yeah Right. I thought they were stand-up basses. That's how I inquired them. I was going to give them to somebody who's a bass player. <laughs> you know, you know what? I bet you these were probably little perfume bottles at one point. You, you think maybe a perfume bottle? Yeah, uh, that, that one had that metal thing on it, so it was. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it, it on, did. It was on the wall. I think. This this came this the this bleh, I can talk. <laughs> this did come with a little uh, metal clip. Um, so I don't know why you would hang this on a wall, but it's, it's a cute little bottle. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to complicate things because this, uh, doesn't look very good on, on video, but, uh, you can see the, the strings that are, uh, you know, uh, 3D relief on the surface of the bottle, and we got the the F, what what are they called? Ethels, all right. Uh, and then we have a little bit of a notch on the neck, and we have the little cutouts here. So there's there's shape and there's texture to this. And that's what okay. I was interested in. Most, many of these things have uh, relief, like the, the measuring bottles and right. stuff. They've got or the the soda bottles have some sort of uh, yeah. You know, uh, think of the Coca-Cola bottle. The Coca-Cola yeah. bottle has facets and everything. All right. And this is the, the uh, a larger, darker version. All right. This one you can really see. All right. You can see the uh, F holes are inset into the glass. And what's supposed to be the strings is actually raised above the, the glass. All right. Uh, and it's not as dark. Uh, can you... Yeah, you can see it's kind of like that, that more of a reddish color. Okay, so so I'd be interested in part of it is like what the ones with the print is, making sure these things get accentuated properly. Right? Correct. Yeah. All right. So now we are really complicating our setup here because it's not so much now about the outside shape of our bottle but also about the surface uh, uh, textures or the surface elements of the bottle. All right, so what do we have? Who knows? Let's take a photograph and see what what we have to deal with. All right, because as you know, uh, we're going to skip that for a second. Okay. All right, because as you guys know, uh, you know, one of the best ways to get uh, good is to analyze what is wrong with an image, okay? Uh, and right now, we don't know what to solve because we don't know what we need to solve, all right? So let's take a look, and uh, we know that we have our exposure doing a good job, right? So let me focus, all right, and take a, we'll take a shot. All right, so what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Okay. We have 
we have some nice outlines. We have some nice outlines. We do. I like okay. it. Uh, we have, yeah, nice outlines. Okay. However, there are a lot of problems. One, this is not a very interesting composition, right? No. Not, not at all. Okay. Uh, here, let's see if we can get you in into the shot. Come on. Come get, on, and get get comfy. Get comfy. <laughs> all right. So this is a lousy, lousy composition. Okay. And if we look at it, we're losing a lot of the uh, uh, the definition on the lower part. Okay. And we definitely don't have enough definition in the center part of the bottle to to really showcase those elements okay they're a little bit more noticeable in the clear bottle simply because again the nature of the material <clears throat> light travels through that glass a lot easier on clear glass than on colored glass so you can see the difference and the light transmission through the glass between the two okay all right so now they can see them side by side hopefully that that really you know pops out to you guys all right so what are we going to do all this little detail in here the f all right and the strings all right and hopefully the base needs to be accentuated all right and while we're at it, let's see if we can make something a little bit more interesting rather than just two bottles side by side, right? Okay, so what, oh, it, it'd be nice if I got rid of those. There we go. All right, so what can we do? All right, we can play around with our composition. And Brian and I actually did that a little bit earlier. And we said, you know what? Because we have a height difference between the two, if we turn the tall one on the side, we can we can get a little bit more of a nicer composition, all right? And if we put the clear one in front of, you know, we get that little bit of depth perception, okay? So... Let me take a, a quick a, a quick pause. Okay. One thing that I have not been doing through all of this is dust control. Okay, I haven't been doing that. If this is something that you guys are interested in doing down the road, uh, dust control is one of the things you're gonna be fighting with you all the time. Yeah, I, I have my little dust control things. The funny thing is, but can you see the dust? Yeah, you can't see the dust. With our naked, once you take the picture, oh my God, it screams at you. All right, and hopefully you guys saw it with the the earlier photos. All right, you can't see that dust. All right, but it's there, and uh, you know, uh, the nature of photography. All right, so I just randomly placed uh, the, the tall bottle. Uh, yes, you guys really can't see because of that panel. All right, but I, I placed a tall bottle on the side, the little bottle in the front. Uh, I'm just gonna well, make sure we take a shot. Uh, let's see what it does, okay? Let's see what it does. All right, oh, that's horrendous. That's terrible. Okay. So I have a question mm -hmm. about what I was thinking about how I might do something like this with complete newbiness. And I, I told I well, I bought that Luma Cube, mm -hmm. one like this, let's say. Would there and I remember this from our light painting, you know, mm -hmm. when we were doing a different but would there be a way or would that be a technique to try and just shine some light on the front you or would know that what? cause all you're onto something here, Bri. Later. You're onto something, all right? But yes, that would be uh, a very suitable solution, okay. all right? So let's let's go back over to our setup, okay? And 
the nature of this particular thing is now we, we have a bottle that is flat. It's got flat surfaces rather than the previous bottles that were round. So a round bottle is going gonna, is gonna to reflect everything 360 degrees, right? Okay. A flat bottle is going to just reflect the, the whatever the surface plane, all right? Uh, whatever surface plane is there, that's what's going to reflect. So once we have, let me move this bottle out of the way, right? We have this flat surface of the, uh, the, the violin bottle, okay? We have it angled, so it's going to reflect anything from over there, all right? Is there a light there? No, our light is back here. All right, so what surface is going to reflect this light? The back. That surface is going to be reflected off the back here. This, this, the, which is the bottom of the bottle, all right, is going to reflect this, okay? And by angle of reflection, because our panels are taller, all right, it, the top can see that pop and see this all right so the top of our panel is going to be reflected off the top of the bottle right which is obviously laying outside but there's nothing here in the front that's being reflected all right because we don't have a light here so if we put something here to reflect back then that would solve our issue okay so let's take a a photo of I, I removed the glass bottle. Let's take a look at what this looks like. All right. And you'll see what I mean by nothing in the front of that bottle is being uh, reflected, right? Nothing. Okay. So let's put something there to reflect. All right, you got that little white reflector. All right, we have a white reflector. Another one, another DIY. Yeah, go ahead. And, okay, where am I putting this? Over here? All right. So come on this side, and what we want to do is we want to uh, bring it so that this edge kind of there. There you go. And then now bring it towards the light. Bring it towards the light. No, no, the, the whole thing. So oh, like this. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Right there. Bring it up so it's above the table. Yeah. Okay. So now what I, I had Brian do is he's holding a white, well, it's a white diffusion card. All right. But it's white. It's going to reflect the light that is opposite from it. So that light over there, all right, is coming in this direction. It's going to light. It's going to illuminate the front of this. All right, and it's going to give the bottle something to reflect. So let's take a photo. All right, go ahead and relax. And let's see what that does. <clears throat> All right, and if we go over to the desktop, and if we compare the two, all right, <clears throat> not by a lot, but there is something there, okay? All right. We can see, uh, can you guys see it in the, it's very, very faint, all right? Yeah. But if we compare it to that one, all right, you can't see anything there. There you can see it, okay? So we have the placement correct, we just don't have enough light, all right? So this is where Brian's suggestion can come into play, all right? <clears throat> we can take a little... A third light, okay. And yep, he has he has his nifty little tool. Black Friday, Black Friday. <laughs> whoa, the Black Friday special. Uh, what is this? Is this a, a this is a Luma Cube Luma, Luma Cube uh, Luma Cube panel light? And we are fifty percent right now. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, we'll leave it that. All right, but color temp. Wow, color temperature resets. We had that earlier. All right, we go ahead and bring that up to uh, 55. There you go. 
uh, what he's doing is on the back, there's a little uh, LCD screen that allows you to really control different aspects of this light. Uh, this light has, uh, it's an RGB light. So that means you can have red, green, blue, yellow, purple light, whatever you want, right? Uh, and you can also control the warmth of the light. So by default, I guess it, it's a very warm light. So what we did is we need to color balance with these lights. So these lights in the back are um, uh, uh, set for white light. So what we need to do is make sure that this one also is set to balance. So it's at 55K Kelvin, all right, uh, 5500 all right which is uh uh white balance for natural sunlight okay all right so what we're going to do uh go ahead and grab that that diffusion panel come back over yep we're going to put the diffusion panel back in the same exact spot but what brian's going to do is he's going to hold his light uh just a little bit behind yeah so what we want to do just like we we kept a little bit distance from our light source to those panels in order to really fill the panel we're going to do the same thing you know he's got a small light we need to make it bigger so we put the diffusion panel in front okay and go ahead and right about right about there yeah and bring the, the light and back the light up a little bit all right Let's see what we get now. Okay, relax. Oh, yeah, here we go. Let's switch over to the desktop. All right. If we compare. All right, so this one here was uh, panel only. All right. And this is panel plus light. Okay, you can see the big difference between the two. All right, we can see a lot more of that detail on the front of our bottle. Okay, so now obviously, you know, if you're working by yourself, you don't want to be, you know, standing holding lights and holding panels you'll want to get something to hold it for you, all right? So for now, we're just going to, you know, hand hold it, okay? All right? Uh, and because we have a little bit of interplay, all right, what is it doing to our, all right? Remember that, that studio light? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. There it is. It's <laughs> it's right here. All right, and it's right there. Okay. Uh my my studio lights are long thin LED uh lights. They look like fluorescent. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They're not fluorescent. They're not fluorescent. Oh. They're LEDs, wow. but they have a, a little diffusion panel makes them look like fluorescent lights. All right, so they're they're long at 8 foot. It's an 8 foot long lamp. Okay, and it's clear on the other side of the room, and you can see it right there being reflected. Okay, so now here comes the decision, all right, especially if you're working by yourself in a studio. You only have so many hands. You only have so many stands, all right? And you got Lightroom. <laughs> and you got Lightroom and Photoshop, okay? You need to... Pay attention to the placement of these highlights, okay? Is it easy to remove in post-production? If that's the case, don't worry about it now, all right? But if you're the type of person that needs to be perfect in camera, all right, and you have the gear to put stuff up, all right, go ahead and put the, uh, you know, the flag on a stand and you don't have to worry about it, okay? All right. Okay, so now that's our uh, dark bottle. We need to introduce our light bottle. All right, so let's put the light bottle back up. Okay, and 
and we're going to bring the uh, diffuser diffusion panel okay close as close to there as we can get yeah okay All right. and then uh hold up yeah okay let's see what this gives us All right and Doc, you got to change screens. Oh, sorry. All right, all right. Okay, so uh, what we did is is I put the glass, the, the clear bottle up there. Uh, Brian's holding that uh, white diffusion panel. He's got the little uh, Luma Q behind it. You know what? I'm going to bring this up to block the the uh, studio light and we're gonna take we're gonna take a shot okay got a match yeah. all right go ahead and relax all right now let's go back to oh there we go look at that okay I'll probably change the the uh, uh, the angle of the camera a little bit maybe lower the camera angle but we have a clearly defined uh, bottle, okay? Two clearly defined bottles. Two clearly <laughs> defined bottles, all right? And the nice thing is, you know, uh, can you get this perfectly perfect in camera? Uh, probably not. But, you know, the, the nice thing about uh, Photoshop is that we can you know, really take, let's see, there we go. All right. Bring this down. Yeah, let's, let's, let's really crop this in. Enter. There we go. There we go. Oh, what do we, we got a little, a little something right there. And okay. Uh, oh, oh, I, oh, that's the reflection of that. Okay. That's, yep. So yeah, we're picking up that nice reflection onto our surface. All right. So this is this is our ground plane. This is all reflection. All right. Um, but you know, uh, whenever you're dealing with anything that's smooth and reflective. Uh, you know, not only dust, but fingerprints, mm -hmm. okay? And little, you know, uh, like you saw the previous bottle, I never removed the, the label the proper right. way. So it, there was, you know, glue residue, things like that. Oh, all right. Okay, so now uh, we can take a look at this and we can say, all right, there are a few things that need to be corrected, all right? And depending on what the end, res end use of your image, from this point on, you have the fundamental lighting setup set up for this shot. From here on, it would just be a little tweak here, a little tweak there, all right? So we would look at small things. For example, all right, the neck of the bottle isn't very well defined so i might want to add something that reflects along the top edge all right <laughs> or maybe even the bottom edge of that 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 neck just to make it pop out okay uh we're losing the back edge here all right so maybe uh put a light above or something that re that reflects it from above okay uh this here okay it's a little bit too much okay so i might want to take the light panel that's there and move it behind a little bit more all right and these are all little things that you would do until you get the proper setup all right now we're going a little bit beyond the pop and drop here sure sure because this particular subject requires a little bit more of finessing all right so if this is something like you want to add to your you know to record uh your property and you want archived images you want to show right. you know the the form as best as possible all right uh in a nice artistic way 
you're going to spend a little bit more time placing your lights, okay? Placing whatever is being reflected off of the glass. Well, that's why I wanted here. to do this because, well, like I said, glass is hard, you yes. know, and it's interesting. Like, first, I couldn't believe we spent, we spent a half hour before we even started the show playing around setting things up. Yep. And that what we've done just, Playing around with it, mm -hmm. you know, it's just amazing that that much time is necessary to go. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. Uh, whenever you get into any kind of uh, tabletop still life photography, it's literally 95% setup, 5% shooting. It really is. Okay? I'll, I'll make an observation. I've been, I follow this uh, website or this group on Facebook called, well, it's called Pre Code Photos, but I joined it because of all the excellent mid 30s photography and there's a photographer out there whose name escapes me but when you look at the picture at first you go that's really neat but then after about two minutes you go oh my god this guy spent days mm -hmm. setting up his lighting yeah yeah <laughs> before we even got into the dark room and he was doing it with oh yeah 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 yeah. It's just, yeah it's amazing um again you know you have to look at the end use yep uh if it's gonna if it's a commercial piece and you're getting paid big bucks you're gonna spend time make sure everything is perfect all right mm -hmm. uh if it's just something that's gonna go up on ebay most people on ebay don't care what it looks like i mean mm -hmm. they're they're happy with a cell phone photo yep. you know honestly but what's going to sell your product better mm -hmm. that first shot that we took of the bottles you know or or <laughs> this shot that's ready to go home. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, so, you know, you have to weigh those factors into the photography as well. If you're not getting paid for it, you're not going to spend, you know, five hours to get it right. You know. Um, Although I will say that one, the first, second one you took of the uh, dark bottle by itself. All right, so that to me looked. I go, oh, so that would be that one. No, no, the dark skinny bot way back when we were testing that one. There it is. That one. That's just a neat. That to me is a neat shot. You can. It's choose. a neat shot. It's a flawed shot. Yeah. It's a crappy shot. <laughs> oh, I liked it. <laughs> yeah. All right. but, but I mean, it's got yeah. potential for you know. Yeah. Not so, expecting what you're going to so, do. So and, and then here's the other thing. All right. Uh, one thing that we didn't get here. Let me switch over to this. Okay, one thing that we didn't get into with that bottle shot. Um, all right, sorry, I'm, I'm, no, I'm sorry. cutting you. You're gonna have to do this, you know. To <laughs> all right, so one thing that we didn't get into <laughs> here is the fact that the size of the table doesn't allow us to really move in those lights in very close. Oh, okay, okay. Um, the other thing is. So for example, with this with with this particular shot, all right, I would I would photograph this and this would be a great shot for those two sides. I would then rearrange my lights so that I can uh let's go back to my desktop. So I can get some kind of light here and some kind of light here. Okay, because that's going to define the top and the bottom of our bottle. So the way, but you just said that though, add more light, you would bring in lights and retake. So, them. so I would, you know, uh, either get the little Luma cube and see what it does from above, from below. All right. Uh, as soon as I introduce that, it's probably going to create all kinds of havoc in the center part. Right. But at that point, I wouldn't care because I know that I can take the good parts of this photo, the good parts of that photo, and combine them both in Photoshop. So we basically mask out the garbage, keep the good stuff, and then we get a really beautiful bottle shot. Neat. Okay? All right, let's go to our chat. Any questions? Any questions uh, from you guys? Oh, let me uh, uh, put that. Any questions from you guys? Oh, well, great perspective, though. I mean, I, I see this completely differently. I, I'm going to do some shooting later on tonight of a uh, uh, desktop uh, um, 
village, a Christmas village, and I'm going to look at it completely different. Absolutely, yeah. I'm going to put some lighting on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Brian's got the that this little. I mean, this is this is awesome. I should pick up a few of these for myself because you know, working working small like this, there's only so much you can do with the big lights. There are times where you need that little bit of a kicker. All right, uh, and these little. Uh, how much did this cost you? Do you recall? That's, that was that's not cheap. Yeah, Luma cube, Luma cubes are not cheap, but they're they're oh, really oh, fantastic. Uh, like 140 bucks. 140 bucks. That one in your left okay. hand, that was like 20. Yeah, so these the these are thing, the but, the cheapy, uh, the cheapy Chinese stuff. This is uh, Ulanzi, okay. But look at the size of this thing compared to to my palm. All right, these are great because, actually, let me see if I can. Uh, Oh, here we go. Let, let's let's do this. Let's do let's let's see what it does. All right. Let's see what it, that's probably gonna look like crap. Yeah, that's that's gonna look like crap. But just for just for giggles, let's see what it does. All right. Uh, we're shooting light through a. Um, oh, I am not tethered broke my i i uh disrupted my tether let's go back to tether oh oh we are tethered why oh he, here it is okay no it, it, it took a second okay all right look at that that is that's terrible first of all all right but that's, that's terrible but that's the first shot you, you turn that yeah. down warm it up close it yeah all right but you can see the power of that little light. Uh, obviously, you know, it's through an empty bottle. Right. But imagine that being a full bottle, like a, a whiskey bottle, and you need to to uh, illuminate the, the whiskey inside the bottle. Mm -hmm. All right. Put that behind it uh, with a diffusion card against the back yeah. of the bottle to, to really make that light spread out. And you have a... a awesome little light in frame mm -hmm. that's doing its job but you can't see it because it's so small that's awesome that's all awesome. look at all the fingerprints on the neck <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh uh for those of you who want to get into product photography you have to invest in windex uh microfiber cloth and uh cotton gloves <laughs> they're they're a must and and little dust brushes Okay. All right. So, so yeah, these, uh, uh, these little, you know, are, are very handy. How much is for that one? This, he said it was about 20 bucks. You said, right? I, yeah. I bought it on Roughly. Facebook and it was 10 or 15 or 20 bucks. Yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> these, yeah. The, the keep in mind, you know, uh, with, with lights, uh, you get what you pay for. All right, so the color consistency on these may not be the best. All right, well, you know, for what you just did there, but that's the for, best thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the other thing I had was absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, if you need to add color, yeah, who cares what the white balance is yeah. on this? You know, because you're just going to be using it for the color. All right, you you put a a kiss of color on on an edge of a product. Oh my God, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and these things are so small, <clears throat> like I said, you can put it right right in your setup, hide it behind something, or, or put it just off outside a frame, and, you know, you they, they do they do the job. Hey, oh, Ulanzi. Brand, what brand is it? That's Ulanzi. Up, up here, up here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ulanzi. U-L-A-N-Z-I. Uh, They're they're I, very I inexpensive, uh, uh, inexpensive Chinese lights, LED lights. You know. I, I have something similar to that. Plus, I have more expensive. Um, I forget the name of it. Which is fine, quite good. Wish for five I had to use them for video photography, but some of those yep. lights come with gels. Yeah. If you yes. Want to if you want to manipulate uh, color or 
color cast or whatever you want to call it, do you recommend using a gel or do you recommend mm -hmm. doing post? Uh, if, if you can dial the color into your light, it allows you to be more flexible without carrying extra gear or keeping track of gels. All right. Uh, bigger lights, obviously, you know, um, uh, a, a lot of them don't have the ability to be able to dial in different colors. All right, so like the the little Godox that I have, they're <clears throat> they're called bicolor lights, uh, and I I can either have either a warm light or a cool light. I can't have red or green or blue or whatever purple. Uh, I can't do that. Okay, so in in that case, I need to put a gel in front of those lights if I want to change it to blue. But something like what Brian brought in, uh, which are multicolor lights, you can just dial in whatever light you want. All right. Uh, the, uh, can I see that Luma uh, Cube panel? The Luma Cube panel has a little LED display on the back. All right. I just turned. I just turned the light. Let me see if I can bring it up. I see it. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. It's got a strong oh, yeah, light. That's, that's All right. Like my, that's like my kitchen light. You can buy uh, lights in the store now where you can uh, fix the balance. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But those lights are cheap, so you're not going to get the consistency. But here okay. we, we can set the color temperature. All right. Uh, by default, it goes to what is that? Uh, Zero to uh, 3000 Kelvin. All right. Uh -huh. But if you look down at the bottom, you see an R, uh, you see the red and you see the green and you see the blue squares yeah. there. Oh. All right. Oh, I see. So you can dial in an exact color. All right. Just go to uh, an RGB reference uh, on your computer and say, oh, I want that shade of purple. You dial it in, you know, uh, it's a, it's an amazing little piece of kit. So, all right. Um, any other questions? You have any questions? No questions. I have one question. Uh, before uh, before we close it up, what, can I move all of them on that table for one? Question? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Once talk, talk to your students. Once, <laughs> what? Yeah. Once we're done here, we can play with whatever. All right. Uh, how about you guys? Any questions? That's a good doc. No? Right? All right. Uh, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're almost there. Okay. Uh, I, I was kind of worried that I was going to go a little long like I did last time, but uh, we're, we're good to go. Okay. Got good help. All right. So uh, the takeaways here is when you're working with reflective surfaces, what you want to do is you want to give those surfaces something that you can control to reflect back towards the camera all right so in this particular case uh i lit these panels from behind okay let me turn this off i lit these panels from behind but it's the panel that is being reflected off the surface of the glass okay uh and as you notice because the glass is round it reflects everything 360 degrees around all right, so you have to move those panels behind your product so uh, we get that, that little edge definition rather than having it encroach all the way around the front, okay? Um, and then, of course, you notice the light transmission through the material between the clear and the dark glass. So that's something that you need to consider, okay? Uh, where is that light transmission important? If you photograph any glass that is etched, okay, uh, you know, like like a goblet, you know, that says Mr. and Mrs., you know, and then the, the wedding uh, date, right? Uh, the glass transmission is what's going to really light those up. So, so 
uh, you got to watch your your light placement. Okay. Commercially, all right. If you want to try maybe doing a bottle of booze or a bottle of beer uh, or a bottle of soda or a bottle of anything, okay. Uh, one of the things that we have to consider uh, commercially is we do not want to photograph the back label through the bottle all right so back labels tend to get removed okay which is a pain in the ass on screen printed glass all right uh i've had to do that screen you know the screen printed labels you have to take a razor blade and you got to spend about half an hour cleaning that uh off the back no fun it's not a, it's not a fun task but, do you recommend just using a razor blade to do that or cleaner? Yeah. Uh, nothing else takes it off. Okay. Single edge razor blade. Single edge razor blade or exacto knife. Yep. And, and you just got to scrape away and scrape away and scrape away, and then buff the heck out of it mm -hmm. afterwards. <laughs> but that's why commercial photographers get paid the big bucks, right? <laughs> To put up with stuff like that all right all right for those of you who photograph people how can we take this lesson and apply it to people no uh, key light have have the key light oh <laughs> glasses and move the glasses down like what you're doing there that's right uh glass on glasses is going to reflect your main light all right so you have to keep that in mind okay but more importantly all right as you saw the difference between the the dark bottle and the light bottle skin also transfers light okay light does go through skin all right it's not as obvious but it does okay but more importantly, it's the light that is hitting the, the subject, your, your person for the portrait, is being reflected back to the camera. Just like the glass, the glass is reflecting a lot more light back, all right? But it's that light that's being reflected back that's being photographed. If we substitute a person for that bottle, it's still light reflecting off that person coming back to the camera that we are photographing. Darker skin, you're going to be photographing the highlights more than the actual skin tone. Whereas with a light colored person, you're gonna rely more on shadow to give you that definition. All right, so just like we took that clear bottle and we we boosted the shadow up to reduce that transmission it's the same thing with people all right light colors you need to boost up that shadow a little bit more uh and reduce the specularity with darker skin tones it's the opposite all right so the principles apply across a wide gamut of photography all right not just not just on glass bottles Okay. All right. Uh, one thing we didn't discuss here, uh, I'm going to throw it out. Something that you might want to look at uh, is what's called light field and dark field photography. Uh, the principles we used here uh, kind of played a little bit on that, where uh, dark field photography is where uh, the product looks dark because it's not reflecting any kind of light. As soon as we put something light that it reflects off of, like the panels, that's what we're photographing. That's dark field photography. All right. That comes into play not only with, with dark colored glass, but things like stainless steel. All right, anything that has a high reflectance that's going to reflect everything around it. If you don't want to reflect something, you have to put black to reflect back. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right.
I don't want to fry too many brains, so I'm not going to go. I, I, I've seen that in pictures of uh, beside, be, behind the scenes uh, film photography for TV yep. shows and movies where it's an outdoor scene and a ton of reflectors. Yes. Yeah. Um, for tabletop, it's used a lot when photographing coins. If you just put a light that kind of skims across the surface to to you know give you that texture, all right, and you're you're shooting it like top down. All you're gonna see are all the edges on on the coin. You're gonna see the edges of the face. You're gonna see the edges of the text, but you're not gonna see any of the flat surfaces. As soon as we put something light to reflect back on the surface of that coin. All of a sudden, we get that satiny look to the silver coins. One Wait. problem I have with reflection, if I'm taking pictures of Here. people Come at on. a function or a party or whatever, you have you have a group of people, but one person is very, very light skinned, yeah. and that person just looks neon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you have uh, uh, a lot of mixed tone, you really, really need to be balanced with your exposure. Uh, you want to be, you know, closer to, um, you know, underexposing those bright skin tones uh, a little bit. Okay. Uh, wow. And, you know, you just manipulate it in post. Uh, you okay. Had a, a question? That's what I've been doing. Yep. A uh, further question on dark field, whether this would apply. <clears throat> Something I want to do down, or I'm going to do down the road. I have a friend who's an artist, and he's been doing these things, and it's actually kind of slightly three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. He's taking acrylic, and, and it's almost pasting it on these. So would you, and I want to take pictures of his artwork. Mm -hmm. And so would something like that come into play? Because okay. that's partly why I bought this, so, so that I could yeah. make an angle. And like... All right. So in that case, just like the violin bottle that has a lot of surface texture on it, okay, mm -hmm. by throwing light sideways against it, you're, you're highlighting one edge of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's, it'll be the same thing with oil or acrylic. Right. In order to get that texture... You're going to have a light source where those those um, um, high points mm -hmm. of the brushwork reflects that light. Right. Okay. Okay. And then the valleys and the uh, uh, the dark side of the peaks is going to be no light. Okay. All right. So it's it's called cross lighting it. So you're you're basically just throwing light across the surface not at the surface if that makes sense it does okay awesome all right guys thank you once again to another edition of learn photography with duck uh, this was a good one Doug. awesome uh i i'm glad you like these sessions i want to do more of these uh so please if you guys want to be in the studio with me like brian is today let's give brian a big round of applause Yay. <laughs> But <laughs> if, if you know, uh, and we had uh, Gloria here previously, if you want to be in the studio with me, just let me know. All right. We'll, we'll make this happen. I, I love doing stuff like this. Okay. Um, next week is uh, Christmas. Uh, if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah. If you Christmas. celebrate Kwanzaa, you know, Happy Kwanzaa. Huh? Actually, uh, Hanukkah is happening now. Right now. Yeah, right now. That's right. Yes. So happy that's festival nice. lights nice. for our Jewish friends. Okay. Uh, but anyway, have a, a happy holiday. And we I won't see you until next year. Next year. Next yeah. year. It's, you know, this time of year, it's always weird saying that. Hey, I'll see you next year. Yeah, that's in like three days. You know, <laughs> you know what's really weird? You know what's really weird? We are going into the 23rd year of the 21st century. That freaks me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The 23rd year of the 21st century. 
Yeah. It's it's weird, you know, and and so you th you look at all the progress that we've seen in our, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. And if we look back on our like grandparents, yeah, you know, yes. like my grandparents, they were born in the early 1900s. <laughs> there, there were still covered wagons. <laughs> roaming the Midwest when they were born. <laughs> uh, uh, my you know, grandfather, uh, my grandfather was born in 1870. Right? Yeah, um, they had their kids late. Uh, my parents had their kids late too. So mm -hmm. my, my grandfather was born in 1870. Yeah. He had his own business doing uh, plastering and mas uh, masonry work. He had a horse and buggy. Yeah. 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 And my, my the... parents were born in 1913, 1914. And being the media guy that I am, the media nut that I am, my parents didn't grow up with radio until they were like teenagers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. You know, my grandparents used to go to the well for water. Yeah. Can you imagine doing that? We're spoiled. I just go into the other room, turn a faucet, you know. We're, 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 oh yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know. So, but anyway, uh, have yourself a great holiday season. Uh, stay safe, and okay. we'll see you yeah. next year. All right. Have a good one. Thank you, Doug. Happy holidays. Yeah. Likewise. Well, thank you, Doug. Thanks for watching. Learning photography with Duck. Brought to you in association with Milford Photo, your local full-service camera store. Located in downtown Milford, Connecticut, Milford Photo offers you a personalized shopping experience. From the latest camera gear to printing and framing services. And, of course, educational workshops to teach you the finer aspects of photography. Don't forget to tell them Duck sent you.